Greetings and salutations, I'm your quirky artist Heini Mika. Uh, it's another makeup look and uh, another mini bio. So today we are doing, uh, I'm talking about Barbara Hutton, who who got the, uh, who, who's better known from for this, um, this quote, um, the poor little rich, rich girl, you might have heard, heard that saying before. Uh, and uh, yeah, so I'm now in New York, moved to Manhattan. And I'm gonna give you a quick pan eventually um, of, of our view because we've got a very lovely view here. And uh, so I, the first time I came to New York was, where, was in 2016 when I was, uh, when I was a flight attendant. And uh, yeah, New York was the first city I visited because we needed a special visa to come here because when you're a flight attendant, you come here, you're actually working. So you need to work out the work visa, travel visas and whatever, uh, regardless of your passport. Uh, because your company sponsors you to come here and to work here even if you're just here for a layover you're technically at work so yeah i came to new york for the first time and uh, we stayed in long island <laughs> we didn't get to stay in manhattan but uh, i came to manhattan on my own and uh, we have a saying with the cabin crew community is kind of like um you're either east coast or west coast so i got to see yeah new york i got to see los angeles um, san francisco and dallas uh, and I'm definitely an East Coast girl, definitely. Not, be not just because I feel like New York, especially, or the, the whole b bunch of East Coast. Oh, and Washington DC, I've been there as well many times. So I feel like the East Coast still has some of that European sentimentality. After all, New York is technically New Amsterdam. So I'm, I'm, I'm an East Coast girl, definitely. And also, uh, re um, related to this video, um, the um, the uh, oh my god, what was I going to say? About Barbara Hutton, of course, yes. And because of the society, the New York society is quite well known or referenced, even if you don't know anybody who is actually in the high society. But the stuff like the Knickerbockers, the the three hundred, Lady Astor's three hundred, and stuff like that. Me as a history nerd, so that's how I know. So you have the movie stars on the on um, in the West Coast, and over here you have the high society. So that kind of always intrigued me, which brings me to Barbara Hutton. So when I was thinking about New York and like the ambience of New York and what I think about when I think about New York was the high society and Barbara Barbara Hutton was very much in that New York high society but not only that she was a billion dollar heiress and also she was a princess not only once but I believe twice um, so yes so the makeup is, is New York inspired from my from my point of view and uh, so without further ado uh, let's get to the video all right all right so let's get to it um, I already uh, primed my eyes with the Too Faced shadow insurance and uh, so first off we are gonna start with the, that's the BH Cosmetics the Summer in Central Bay palette and I'm gonna take here we go Cabana and we are gonna put it on the moving lid I'm gonna start with my finger to really pack in that color so Barbara Hutton was born on November 14th in 1912 in New York City and she was the heiress of the Woolworth Empire uh, if you heard about Woolworth it was um, a store, a chain of stores. Um, I believe F. W. Woolworth. He started the whole thing. So at that time, uh, you would have to haggle in stores. So the price were not fixed. So Woolworth, his stores, Woolworth um, had fixed prices. I think it was ten and fifteen cent stores. So the prices were fixed. So that was quite revolutionary at that time. And so Barbara. Oh, sorry. So Barbara. Uh, inherited um, from the Woolworth uh, fortune from her mother's side um, when Barbara when she was five years old her mother committed suicide at Plaza Hotel and Barbara's father was never really interested in her she was left alone um, she stayed with uh, relatives and in boarding schools and it was said that she had a very unhappy childhood. So when she turned 18 in 1930, it didn't go um, well uh, in the press because the, the Great Depression just happened and her father threw her a very lavish birthday party. So apparently to escape 
that bad press uh, she came to Europe and in Europe she met her first husband Alexis Midovani so Barbara fell in love and when she turned 20 she got married to Alexis uh, and then uh, she became a princess Barbara saw she was married to her prince for a while and then when she turned 21 she got her full inheritance and guess how much that was just 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 guess she got one billion dollars in today's money so in 2020 they estimated that when she got her inheritance it was one billion dollars just just like that basically uh lucky girl um but yeah alexis he was spending a lot of money like he he they called him this uh, the spendthrift prince and then after a year or two she just she just got tired of of the prince and so her second second um second husband was danish he was count ravenclaw and uh, he was completely different from alexis like count this count he was a hard man he wasn't a nice man um apparently he 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 was mentally and physically abusive to barbara and uh, well they did have a son together lance but uh, it was said that barbara it was it was it, it, it was hard um it was a hard relationship for her and she actually when she was with alexis um she um she developed an eating disorder she became anorexic um because apparently her husband on their wedding night told her that she's kind of fat so after that she was on diet the whole all the time and really watching her weight and now with the with the count because he was being so abusive and apparently beating her and whatnot so she started abusing drugs and alcohol so yeah just just kind of like you have all the money in the world but just the people who surround you are really not nice people and that's like eventually they came to say about barbara hutton that she's the poor little rich girl that's where the saying comes apparently so the next palette is the natasha denona this is the glam palette and i'm gonna take this one right in the middle the brown oh there you go you can see new york um take the brown one right in the middle after the count and after having the son she was never really close to her son apparently uh they had a good relationship but they were not close so after that i would say comes my uh, this is goes right in the crease um comes my favorite husband who is carrie grant i've got a job a secretary a mother two ex-wives and several bartenders dependent upon me and i don't intend to disappoint them all by getting myself slightly killed he was the creme de la creme of the of the movie industry at that time and Barbara Hutton snagged him and they came to they, they came to be known as Cash and Gary uh, Cash Cash and Carrie what was that Cash and Carrie I think so yeah so um so that was fun like fun relationship however the pro the problem was that um that Carrie Grant he really didn't enjoy Barbara's um titled friends uh, he, he liked spending her money and he liked the fact that he didn't have to spend any money but he really couldn't stand her titled friends so he thought he thought that was very superficial and just 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 phony basically didn't enjoy that so eventually they got um they got divorced sadly and i need to mention that barbara's like the one billion it wasn't just like she was her husbands were spending her money she was also spending her money as well like a lot uh, she bought a lot of jewelry even now there some of her jewelry still exist and i believe one of the recent ones was um, was a jadeite a jade necklace that went down in hong kong went under the hammer in hong kong and i believe god cartier they bought it for like 27 30 million dollars um and uh, so having, having, having said that, Barbara had a great relationship with Cartier. And if, if you know, if you know that um, some of these very big, um, big jewelry houses, like if you spend a lot of money with them, you can become like, um, like, a, like a friend of the ha friend of the jewelry house and whatnot. Uh, Barbara was not only just a friend, like a VIP member of Cartier, they would actually make jewelry for her, which to me like sounds like sounds so magnificent. Like not only are you spending so much money on the jewelry um, that they, they have already made, but no, they, they, they are making jewelry just for you. 
But so after um, after Cary Grant, she yeah, got divorced again, and her next next um, next husband was I need to get the name right. So was uh, Prince Igor Jobetskoy, yes. And uh, apparently this was a love match. So even all Barbara's the few friends she had, like true friends, even they would say that yeah, this this was a love relationship. Like he 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 loved and adored her, and. Um, in the beginning, she was very much in love with him too. However, apparently she got bored and then had a few affairs and then they got divorced as well. So that, that, that's kind of sad, but I suppose like for Barbara who like supposedly wants this great love and love has to be like so dramatic and, and whatnot. So to find somebody who is, um, who is, who is a normal person and it's like it's uneventful, like you love them and they love you. so. For somebody like Barbara could be a little bit kind of like, oh, it's a little bit boring. So she got divorced again. Uh, so going back to the glam palette, so now we are going to take the, the highlighting color right here. And her next husband is uh, is one of my favorites, actually, because it's such a luck. So it's a Proferio Ruberosa, who was a famous race car, I believe Dominican, a race car driver. So what happened with him was their marriage lasted for 53 days and Profirio, he was um, actually caught in Zsa Zsa Gabor, who was, um, um, uh, who was a socialite. She was the, basically the first person to be, uh, for, who, who is famous just for being famous and she was in Hilton actually. She married Conrad Heath Hilton. Um, so Ruberosa was caught in Jaja and apparently he gave her a, an ultimatum that she needs to marry him and apparently when she declined he punched her and then he went off and married Barbara and yet their, their marriage lasted for um, lasted for 53 days and when they got divorced he, he got um, 22 million in today's money I believe 22 million from her after 53 days not to mention the money he spent while they were married this is just kind of like sh comes to show you that money money can really can buy you friends or can buy you love like money can buy you stuff and property and, and social standing possibly but really it can't can buy you buy you love which is quite sad because people said that that was basically Barbara's mission in life technically like she just really wanted love like she did enjoy the money and the, the status because she she was craving for that status to be a princess or to be a countess which is why she had all those titled friends and she got married so many times to these titled people but just like what, what her true friends would say eventually was that she just really truly truly wanted true love and she never got it basically so that's actually that's very very sad and now bringing back about love is um, uh, again I want to get the name right so the next one is a Baron Gottfried and he was an old um, famous tennis star but uh, he was gay and apparently they knew he was gay Barbara knew she, he was gay and still married him again no idea why but she did and again, that marriage didn't last very long because... And so we go back to the dark brown and we are going to put it under the eyes. I'm not going to make it as harsh as the as the, as the, um, the crease. Just going to make it a little bit softer. I just want to keep the lid very dramatic because at the end of the day, Manhattan is quite dramatic, is it not? Um, and then after Bar Baron Gottfried, her last husband was uh, Prince um, Champesac, I believe. Um, he wasn't actually a prince, he was an artist, so Prince Pierre um, Doan. Prince Pierre Doan. So she bought him a title, Prince uh, Champesac, and that kingdom doesn't exist anymore. Uh, because apparently yeah, she wanted to call herself a princess one more time, because she was, uh, she was getting old. and. She was, like I mentioned before, her drug abuse. She was really struggling with that throughout her life um, since, since, the, since the count. And she spent the last years of her life in Los Angeles at the Beverly Wilshire Hotel where she died, I believe from a heart attack. And uh, yeah, the, her friends said that she would just look, look very rough and get this, she spent her whole inheritance the whole one billion dollars just gone by the time she was, uh, by the time she died. So apparently she only had like few thousand left 
to her name and even the hotel was suing her because she wasn't paying her bills and there we go it's almost looks like a superhero in a way <laughs> yeah IRL it's very like woof whoa that's 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 a look <laughs> so um I oh, shouldn't laugh yeah so a, a very very sad life like I haven't read any um any uh, Barbara Hutton biographies, but I have seen documentaries and newsreels and stuff like that. So she does seem like she was an interesting person that people don't give her enough credit about how interesting she actually was. Uh, but it was just like, because at the end of the day, she didn't have a good relationship with the public at all, because obviously people envy her and what else. And uh, she's just spending money and changing husbands or living very frivolously. So I do get that like why people people were unhappy with her um but i just 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 feel sorry for just feel sorry for her that uh yeah you can have all the money in the world but if you don't have like people in your life who love and cherish you then it's kind of like there's only so much money can do apparently i'm just gonna do a very faint line i don't think many people even know that much about barbara hudson because she's um i wouldn't say she's that media sexy compared to like I did my Brigitte Bardot video, uh, video and because Barbara didn't really have um, have a look that could speak to the general public compared to compared to these other women because like you can be a rich billionaire but if you don't have a look that the uh -huh, that the public can imitate then then kind of what's the point I mean not, not what the, what's the point but it's more difficult to engage with the public Okay, so that's the liner, so I had to go a little bit heavier than I intended to because obviously I, I'm spoiling the eyeshadow. So I'm also going to do my usual uh, usual last thing, and uh, uh, the same thing, this video is getting long once again. So I'm going to do that off camera and get back to you in a minute, okay? That's that, that's the eyes. You can also um, line your waterlines if you want to, but I'm like, my eyes are actually like a little bit, like if I put that, like, because this is already a lot of makeup, a, a lot of dark makeup. So now if I line my eyes with the with the black coat and so it's literally like my eyes are gonna be looking like just this teeny tiny thing. So that's gonna be a look, okay? But it's gonna, for me, it's gonna be like, there's a lot of going on here with the eye makeup already. And now I'm gonna top it up with this one. So for me, this is gonna be a little bit like it's gonna be a lot but if you want you can use black coal pastel to blind the eyes so now this is a new charlotte tilbury one this is the um the hyaluronic lip balm lip something 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 and this is a happy berry so it is a, a lip balm uh but i love this i got the pillow talk as well and i figured i'll get this 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 one um for for this this look so let's go get on with this and actually compared to like other lip balms that i have tried with uh, tinted lip balms they are not really that tinted but like this one packs color i'm telling you this one packs color like see there you go it's almost like lipstick But yes, here we have it and also my mini bio about Barbara Hutton. Um, so yes, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. And have a good day. Until next time, thank you for watching. Bye, ciao.